Universidad Panamericana Campus Guadalajara team and we'd like to present your firm's evaluation for next year. We'll start with the business description of the company. Fremsa owns 47.9% of COP, the major public bottler of Coca-Cola products in terms of sales at worldwide levels. Last year, these sales represented 60% of Fremsa's income. Also, through Oxo stores, sorry, through Oxo stores, FEMSA is a leading company in Mexico in the convenience store sector and with recent acquisition of drug stores and a fast food chain of Mexican food, it compounds the commercial division of the company that is fully owned by FEMSA and gave 38% of last year's revenues. Also, it's important to mention the 20% of economic interest that FEMSA has in Heineken Group, that is one of the most important companies in the beer sector. About the ergonomic and industry section, FEMSA has influence in three different industries, beverage, convenience stores, and beauty industry. And I'm going to explain different points you have in consideration that will affect the company. The first one is a macroeconomic situation. As we can see, there are several countries where FEMSA has present are presenting several economic decreases, social and political problems. There are other countries as China that could affect the evolution of these countries. If the reason we calculate, of course, could affect cost revenues by 17.5% from, from Venezuela and 27.1% from Argentina and Brazil. The second point is about the consumer. The index of, the index of ICC are presenting a decrease of 7.9% comparable with the past year. And the third point is about the impact of the new taxes in Mexico. That could affect the company. But right now, this impact is not visible for in the company because FEMSA is making a lot of strategies trying to stop this impact. That is some companies that got affected are presenting several decreases. So all these factors are making an uncertainty a scenario for FEMSA in the macro and industry section. As for the valuation, we recommend a whole position based on our target price of 134 Mexican pesos. And in arriving at this target price, we conducted a sum of parts valuation approach. In estimating the value of Coca-Cola FEMSA, we took into account the sales of its different business uh, lines and that perpetual growth rate of 2.85% and the wide was calculated using the T-bond rate for the last the 10-year T-bond rate as the risk free premium and, and the country risk premium of Mexico and we used the market risk premium for the last 10 years. The beta was levered in order to reflect the capital structure effects of the company arriving at a WAC of 7.7% and an estimated value of 470 billions of Mexican pesos. In the relative valuation for this company, we took Arca Continental, Cultiva and the Nordi as comparables. All of them borrowers in which have operations in Mexico and some of them in Latin America. In regard as FEMSA Commercio, the main drivers of the evaluation are the store openings per year, the average consumer ticket, and the store traffic, and being capex closely related to store openings. The growth rate used for the perpetuity per, per was 3% reflecting very economic expectation in the long, long term. The WAC was calculated the same way as for Coca-Cola FEMSA, arriving at a discount rate of 8% and an estimated value of 348 billions of Mexican pesos. In the relative valuation, we took Walmart, Soriana, and Chidrawi as comps, all of them retailers. Therefore, we added a premium of 5% in order to reflect the higher margins of the convenience stores, in this case also. Now, the Heineken participation was valued using the average enterprise value with a multiple during the last year, which is 8.3 times a bit now. We arrived at a target price of 133 Mexican pesos that 
that was then adjusted by simulating three different scenarios affecting the three main variables which are the operating margins of both Coca-Cola FEMSA and FEMSA Commercial. And we also modified the store openings per year. Now, regarding the financial analysis, FEMSA revenues have grown at a 30% rate for the past five years, efficiently with falling accounts receivables, as we can see here in the graphic. Also, FEMSA has healthy levels of liquidity and solvency. Debt to capital ratio has been at 11.6%, while the beta to interest expenses has increased faster at 17.1%. Also, the quick ratio has increased at 30% for the past five years. This opens the door to future debt for more expansion and acquisition. Now, this expansion has been constantly hitting margins. As we can see, with the DuPont method, uh, Raleigh has been hit the most by native commodities, which have been falling year by year for the past five years. Also, the EBITDA market has been very steady at a 15% rate as well for the past five years. This continuing, exp continuing expansion could keep on hitting margins, which confirms a whole. For the recent evaluation, we did a Monte Carlo simulation, which confirmed a whole position by 59.5%. 36%. The assumptions for the model were the competitive environment in which FEMSA is involved, the high sensitivity of the consumers to economic conditions, and the uncertainty in interest rate that could be highly correlated with economic conditions. And of course, we have an impact of foreign exchange risk that could impact the 3% EBIT. We can move for a we can move from a, from a whole position to a sell position, considering the macroeconomic risk and the increasing margins because of the new entrants are occupying the strategic locations and that could impact in terms of average ticket, sales of the store, and traffic of the stores. We can move from a whole position to a buy position, considering the diversification plan strategy of the company to move to more stable markets, such as the one in the United States, and taking the opportunities of expansion to the Philippines. In the next graphic, we see how the average ticket had a higher sensitivity than the new store per year. And that could be a risk because the average ticket had been compensating the increase in the traffic of the stores with more services. And the services are now having a bearish strength. Now we're going to pass to the opportunities. Regarding the census opportunity, the new entrants in the Asian market by the acquisition of Coca-Cola Philippines with partnership with Coca-Cola company represents a new opportunity for FEMSA. The Philippine market has, is very similar than the Mexican market in terms of population numbers. Also, the Philippine market grew at a 7% rate last year versus, versus the Mexican economy of 1.1% last year. This acquisition represents 21 plants in the Philippines versus 18 plants in Mexico that FEMSA already owns. Now, cash is also a, a great opportunity for FEMSA. We project uh, 21 billion Mexican pesos for 2015 of cash. This opens the opportunity to enter and, and, and diversification in a, in a country with a strong economic growth. Also, we recommend leverage expansion for FEMSA in order to increase the enterprise value. Um, regarding the cash, we recommend a stock buyback um, in order to increase the shareholders' value and to buy more territories of Coca-Cola in the future. One minute. Finally, in our investment summary, we'd like to confirm our whole position based in our, in our fundamental analysis that it was the outcome of both negative and positive aspects of the company and on, of the industry. In the positive side, we can see constant revenue growth also important expansion opportunities for OXO and for COF in foreign countries. We could see healthy liquidity and solvency in the, in the company and also we acknowledge a very strong culture of diversification inside FEMSA. In the negative side, in spite of the growth of revenues growth, we identify stall margins and even falling profitability. Also, there is a clear deceleration of economic in the countries where FEMSA has Presence. Finally, we are aware that OXO is running out of locations 
strategic locations to open more stores. Therefore, all this mixed up information confirms a hold with a price of 134.89 Mexican pesos that will give us a potential return of 11.8%. But with the team belief, this is not... This Thank you. Thank you. Get so low. Uh, if if I look for a bond, 
probably in the Mexican market or in the international market from PEMSA, uh, which level of interest rate does it have? Okay, the main debt of PEMSA is actually leases, capital leases, and the, the rate of pay is a little low, that's the way that's it. The reason the cost of debt is lower because actually all of the debt is most of, of the debt is capital leases, mm -hmm. so it lowers the rate when we uh, weigh the, the cost of debt. And a very quick one: uh, which level or uh, what level of uh, expected future return is enough for you to change your whole recommendation into a buy? Is it 12 percent, 15 percent? At what level you are more confident to say this is a buy? Um, based on our valuation, it's, not, it's more based in the risks that the company could have. Um, probably our 15, uh, maybe the same rate, but with more um, concrete strategies, uh, lower risk. They are growing a lot, but we see constant falling margins, and the trends um, seem to be very risky. What the Given that you say that uh, uh, buybacks uh, will be will make sense, and uh, what would you think about uh, FEMSA acquiring uh, acquiring the, the percentage of Coca Cola company in COP instead of uh, making uh, buybacks? And, and what would you think, given what is happening in the beer market? And that the FEMSA position in Heineken is 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 not they don't, it, 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 they don't have a, any any voting rights. And uh, so, what would you think could be a sense of good management in these two two subjects? Should they buy the the uh, portion of Coca Cola company, or should they sell their portion in, in Heineken in order to go into more? Uh, in, 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 into another type of market, as you were saying, it, it creates more value or synergies, given that they're just uh, portfolio investments in portfolio investors in in Haiti. Well, uh, as we have seen, um, Hamza has a lot of cash, and it has been growing. Um, but we recommend um, levered expansion in order to maximize the enterprise value. And regarding the, the cash, it could be used as a, as a buyback because we are continuing expanding by, by leverage. Um, regarding the, the position in the Heineken group, um, we think that right now the, it's, a, it's a possible, there is a lot of coming, um, but right now they have a lot of cash that they, they could use later. They probably um, evaluate the, their position of the Heineken group and take a decision whether they could sell and just the, the money, the big amount of cash to keep acquiring companies uh, expansion strategies. If I may add something to that question uh, about buying uh, COP, additional percentage in, in COP, uh, we believe it's it, it could be a good strategy but we have uh, not other companies that are bottlers and have presence in other countries. So we also believe that instead of buying more of a company where you already have presence, you may find other companies in other markets like Asia or maybe more uh, Latin America. In the same sense, you believe that would be a good idea to sell the trenches of in Argentina or in Venezuela and to change for another kind of assets? Um, they represent a big risk, uh, uh, economic risk, social risk. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it could be a good idea to... One minute. To, to sell those divisions and focus in the um, economy with a robust growth. Um, the U.S. is now growing um, nicely, and they even have a um, presence there. They could buy a, a bottling company there, or 
even keep growing in Asia, which um, has very interest in emerging markets as well, because uh, Tencent already has a really big presence in Latin America.